Today, the Insider Exclusive Investigative TV series goes behind the headlines with Brian Mazzola, founder of the Mazzola Law Firm in dangerous sports, the personal watercraft industry. To expose the dark side of the personal watercraft industry that manufacturers like Kawasaki, SeaDoo, Yamaha, Honda, Polaris, and Arctic Cat don't want you to know. And also to expose the PwC manufactures serious design defects, create a public awareness to help prevent these tragic accidents, and to educate injured victims that they may have real legal rights against some of these PwC manufacturers. Personal watercraft would send their adrenaline-seeking riders skimming atop the surf at up to 85 miles per hour, or also sending them or anyone who gets in their way to the morgue. The tragic accident that left the 11-year-old stepson of R&B star Usher brain dead is raising warning flags and prompting critics to complain that it's just too easy for careless or untrained thrill seekers to hop on a personal watercraft and go racing along congested waterways or shores. It's something of a perfect storm, said Ron Sarver, deputy director for the National Association of State Boating Law Administrators, there's been a number of accidents together here, so we have a lot of people saying, what's happening? The best known personal watercrafts are Kawasaki's Jet Ski and Yamaha Motor Company's Wave Runner. But there are dozens of brands of personal watercraft, and Americans now own an estimated 1.3 million of them. The number of PwC-related accidents has increased dramatically. The greatest tragedy, however, is that many of these accidents can be avoided. Kristen Beal of Richmond, Virginia endured countless hours of physical therapy since August 28, 2005 when she was struck by another jet ski while riding one with a friend on Lake Gaston in North Carolina. Rules for riding vary from state to state, but for private owners there is very little opportunity to enforce regulations. And on beaches where wave runners can rent for $95 an hour or more, only by showing you're at least 16 years old and sitting through a 10-minute boilerplate safety lesson is all that's needed to mount the device and take off. Apart from the obvious hazards of collisions and mechanical breakdowns common to all vehicles, operating PWCs can involve a risk of orifice injuries. A rider who falls or is ejected off the back can land directly in the path of a PWC's high-pressure jet of water. Such an injury can result in a permanent disability or death. PWCs have an inboard engine driving a pump jet that has a screw-shaped impeller to create thrust for propulsion and steering. Because these types of abdominal accidents have received little attention from the media, most owners and operators of personal watercraft are unaware of the risk of death or permanent injury. Last year on July 1st, former astronaut Alan Poindexter was riding a jet ski with his 21-year-old son when his 26-year-old son crashed into them. Poindexter, who piloted the Atlantis space shuttle in 2008, died a short time later at an area hospital. While these accidents have garnered headlines, there have been several other notable wrecks involving personal watercraft. Blair Holiday, a sophomore wide receiver at Duke University, suffered head injuries 
while using a jet ski in North Carolina on July 4th last year and reportedly remains in critical condition. Savannah Casey, 16 of Juneau, reportedly died in June from injuries she sustained while struck by a jet ski as she sat in an inner tube in one of Alaska's lakes. Three women were killed and four others were reportedly injured during an accident in October involving a jet ski and a 20-foot powerboat at Puddingston Reservoir in San Dimas, California. Here are some reasons why PWCs are unreasonably dangerous. Manufacturers have overpromoted PWCs to inexperienced and inadequately trained operators and have focused their massive marketing budgets on the very young and inexperienced. According to the National Transportation Safety Board study, the vast majority of PWC operators involved in accidents were between the ages of 12 and 21. Many of these operators viewed the high-performance vessels as a toy. But personal watercraft are not toys, and people must realize that a 12-year-old child is simply not equipped to handle a 135-horsepower vessel traveling at speeds in excess of 65 miles per hour. What are some of the design defects in PWCs? Perhaps the most dangerous aspect of a PWC is the lack of directional control when the throttle is released. The distinctive nature of the movable water jet without a rudder or brakes creates unique handling hazards. The industry has characterized this phenomena as off-throttle steering. The description of off-throttle steering, an oxymoron, describing a situation where an operator instinctively releases the throttle when confronted with a dangerous situation in an attempt to avoid a collision. Once the water jet is disengaged, however, the ability to safely steer is lost. The PWC essentially becomes a torpedo heading in the last principal direction of thrust. And what is the PWC industry response to accidents and improved safety? The industry has one common response to products liability litigation involving its products. Blame everyone but themselves. Ironically, manufacturers will often claim that the victim was reckless or negligent because they were operating the vessel at a high speed in close proximity to other vessels. To avoid the needless loss of life and serious injuries, personal watercraft must be redesigned to include far more safety features. It took a public outcry in the 1960s and 1970s for the U.S. automotive industry to add seat belts and airbags. Now it's time for marine manufacturers to make safety their top priority in designing a new generation of personal watercraft. Brian Mazzola is a leading advocate for safety in the personal watercraft industry. It has earned him the highest respect from citizens and lawyers alike as one of the best trial lawyers in Beaumont, in Texas, and in America. His goal is not only to get justice for his clients, but to make sure that products sold to consumers are continually developed and refined to adopt the latest safety designs. While no single design change or legislative action will prevent all injuries or deaths, manufacturers need to design safer PWCs to prevent many injuries and save lives. Brian has built a substantial reputation by consistently winning cases other law firms have turned down. His amazing courtroom skills and headline-grabbing success rate continue to provide his clients with the results they need and the results they deserve. This is the Insider Exclusive live from Beaumont and Houston, Texas. It is my great pleasure to introduce Brian Mazzola to the show. Welcome to the show, Brian. Thank you. Happy to be here. Tell our audience a little bit about your law firm. You're based in Beaumont, correct? Right. But you do a lot of work in Houston. I do. What type of law do you practice? Primarily personal injury, uh, emphasis in products liability, and even more specially, I do a lot of personal watercraft cases. Yeah, and that's why we're here today, because a lot of people are not that familiar with some of the safety defects and some of the problems in that industry and you these personal watercraft like the wave runner 
um, like the jet ski are basically torpedoes that are skimming across the water and cause a lot of injuries and even deaths, right? Absolutely. Um, tell our audience a little bit about, we're going to be talking about the whole industry as a whole, the purpose of this, what we would like to get across to the audience, the purpose of this show. Well, there's a particular type of injury that's occurring all across America that most Americans don't know about. And the technical term for it is rear ejection orifice injuries. It's where the third passenger or the third uh, individual on the wave runner or jet ski slides off the back into the jet thrust propulsion and causes massive injuries to uh, typically a woman's genitalia or rectum area. Right. And um, the problem is, is that for years, when these things first came out, they only went 30 miles an hour. We weren't dealing with a lot of horsepower. Well, there's been a horsepower competition over the years, and the different manufacturers are trying to keep up and make them go faster, and now they actually hold three people. Mm -hmm. And of course, to carry three people, you have to have even more horsepower. Yeah. Well, with that being the case, these things are now over 250 horsepower. They go 60 to 70 miles per hour, and the jet thrust propulsion system that actually propels the unit is is essentially a fire hose that there's nothing between the last rider and the jet thrust nothing to prevent them from falling into the jet thrust mm -hmm. and of course when they fall they fall backwards like this and, it, and it's uh, just devastating to to uh, it, it cuts the tissue like paper how would you see manufacturers, because this is another purpose of this show, sure. to increase the safety design of these personal watercraft, how would you see manufacturers increasing the safety so that would prevent that? Well, there's two types of problems that I see with these personal watercraft and what the manufacturers need to do. One of them deals with the design and the other one deals with marketing flaw or marketing defect. Some places it's called failure to warn. Um, the design defect is because, like I said, there is nothing to allow the last passenger to independently secure themselves to the watercraft. Mm -hmm. And the person is relying on holding on to the person in front of them, who in turn is holding on to the driver. Uh, so the middle person is responsible to support the weight of two people. Uh, and that's the only means by which they can stay on the watercraft and when these things take off because of the size of them the nose goes up quite a bit yeah. it causes people to slide off this is entirely foreseeable by the by the manufacturers they know it happens on a daily basis right. and when people's hands slip because of the water for whatever reason um, the manufacturers call it contributory negligence uh, to me um, they need to design out the defect rather than passing the blame on to someone else. Typically, uh, a couple of things they could do is they could have a seat back or a bolster that comes up toward the lower middle back that would cause a person to fall over to the side rather than backwards into the jet thrust. Have, have any manufacturers designed that? They have not. And in fact, and why wouldn't they? Well, I, I think that they fear a multi-line product recall. I believe if they if they were to do it, they would be forced to admit that all the other ones were defective. And I and I think they're going by the Ford Pinto plan, and they they consider the amount of injuries to be statistically insignificant to the yeah. amount of units that are sold. Which of course it's hard to tell that to the to the young lady who's yeah. who's been in an accident. So you can have a back support. A back okay. support would be. What more. other ideas? Um, handles. Um, there's some handles on the Bombardier, for instance, that if you sit on and you're on the last person, your hands don't even reach them. Yeah. Your fingers can't grab them, and to make matters worse, it's behind you. So mm -hmm. there's no type of way to secure yourself onto the watercraft. Mm -hmm. um, the, the handles are actually for mounting when someone falls off into the water and they're mounting back on. Yeah. The handles are to pull themselves back onto the watercraft and uh, it has nothing to do with the third person holding on yeah. and they don't mention anything about that in their manual. They say to hold on to the person in front of them but now they're trying to, they try to say that that is another means by which they could hold on and, and that's just not the case either. Yeah, now you mentioned also something about marketing, how they market these which is, I guess encourages people to go fast, correct? Correct. Well, they, they, they show you videos of people 
going 60, 70 miles an hour, making quick turns and, you know, doing what the things are, are made for yeah. and doing what, uh, what people pay the big money for these things for yeah. so they can go fast. Well, when an accident happens, they want to act like the person's being reckless for using the product the exact way that they advertise it to be used. Mm -hmm. um, they have one warning sticker, Bombardier has one warning sticker up under the steering wheel that tells you that if you slip off the back of one of these things that it can cause injuries. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's one of 19 stickers that's on the thing and it's under the steering wheel. So the person in the back is there's no way they can read it. It's impossible. And if they really wanted people to see it, they would put it on the back where the person loaded up and, and got on. Uh, of course, that would hamper sales if you have stickers saying, you know, yeah. what, what can happen. People don't appreciate that risk. One thing they do say uh, also is there's a sticker that says to wear a wetsuit. Well, that's completely impractical. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in southern states especially, they know people aren't going to wear a wetsuit in 100 degree Texas summer weather. Uh, it's, it's not practical because most of the time people when they ride on one of these things are out on the water and someone pulls them and say, hey, you want to ride? And say, oh, well, hold on, let me run to the store and find, buy me a wetsuit. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. In their deposition, they had admitted, one of the safety advisors admitted that to his observation, maybe 5% of people were actually wearing these wetsuits. So they know that the warnings aren't effective. And then there's not even been any tests done to show that these neoprene wetsuits would work even, yeah. even if people were wearing them. One of the other reasons that we're doing this show is there are people that have been injured. Correct. That um, believe, you know, deep in their heart that it was because of their own fault. Sure. They were driving too fast. They suffered injuries, that sort of thing. Is legal help available to them so that they understand that the personal watercraft was designed poorly, that they maybe weren't trained enough, that it isn't entirely their fault? Is, do these people have access to the court system so they can get remedies for the injuries they've suffered? The, the, the main reason that people feel that they don't have remedies is they, like you said, they, they consider it to be their own fault. Well, the problem is, is that these problems are being caused, these injuries are being caused by a design defect, not human error. These are two distinct things. Human error is someone runs into a tree, someone slings you into the woods. Mm -hmm. uh, these, are, these are human error, and these are risks that you assume by getting on one of these things. Risks that you don't assume is sliding off the back of one of these things, uh, which happen every day in every place across the world. Uh, that you're going to have these types of massive injuries caused by that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I've had people tell me before, so what are we going to do now, sue the, sue the car manufacturer if someone gets in a wreck? And it's completely missing the point. The point is, is if, if someone gets in a car accident and they run into something, that's human error. Now, if the car blows up or the steering goes out or something else, that's a different error. That's what we have here. We have a design flaw that's causing the injuries. And unfortunately, by blaming the driver in the middle person, the manufacturers are adding insult to injury to these people who already feel bad uh, blaming themselves for what's happened when indeed it wasn't their fault. Mm -hmm. Now, you have been very successful with these kind of cases, haven't yes, you? Yes, I have. I think currently you mentioned earlier that before the show that you're handling some cases in South Carolina right now? Correct. So you handle cases all over the United Correct. States? Correct, yes, Okay. Sir. How, and there's a lot of people injured every year. Yes. In, in fact, I looked at the statistics and on personal watercraft, the percentage of people injured each year was substantially higher than any other type of boating accident because mm -hmm. um, you're sitting on a torpedo. How do you select your cases? What's the criteria that you use when someone comes to you and said, my son or my daughter or my husband or whatever was injured riding a, a wave runner, riding a jet ski, whatever it might be? When someone slides off the back of a personal watercraft and is injured from the jet thrust, that to me, you have a case. It's a good case. You, it's a good case. Because the back, the safety device where you would have like a back to your... Correct. Like a sitting in a chair is not there. Correct. And it should be there. They should have handles as well. Should have handles. They should have... Another option is extending the rear deck yeah. behind where the last person rides so to where if the you water dissipates. The water jet dissipates before the fallen rider right. would land into that jet thrust. So you'd be farther away from that Correct. Correct. jet, jet Correct. stream, right? Correct. You know, there, there's something called the safety hierarchy that applies in products liability case. And it goes something like this. The first thing that you do 
is design out the defect if you can. Second, if you can't design the defect out, you guard against it. And lastly, if you can't do either of those, you warn. And warning is the least effective way of, of, of preventing injuries, and it also happens to be the least expensive way of doing mm -hmm. things, which is why uh, manufacturers tend to go this route, rather than doing the right thing and, and addressing the issue and designing the defect out altogether. What would you want to see the warning sign on these say? Because you can't have little fine print. Right. What would you want to have it say? Well, I'd rather not have to deal with the warning at all because I think that the design, you can design it out. Yeah. You, you shouldn't By put, putting the backrest. Correct. And the handles. Correct. You, okay. you, if, you, if that was impossible, then, then I'd say you'd have to put a sticker at least on the very back yeah. where the people loading up would, would see it and it would mean something. Uh, but, but, but I don't think you need to go there because you don't warn against things that you can design out. You can't just get off the hook by saying, hey, I stuck a sticker on there. You have a duty to your consumer to, to make the best possible product with the safest possible yeah. design. Um, why don't more people know about these severe injuries that are being caused by this design de defect? The personal watercraft manufacturers have all gotten together, in my opinion, and they all uh, are keeping this on the down low. They're keeping it as quiet as they possibly can. So they end up settling a lot of the cases? They settle the vast, vast majority of but, them. But they, they make you as a lawyer go to trial and then settle it on the court, courthouse steps? Sometimes. Uh, I, I've, I've had a case settle uh, on the courthouse steps, so yeah. to speak. I've had some. Uh, I, I suspect going forward uh, that, that that it will be uh, less difficult for me to to get legal recourse for my clients because of the fact that I don't think the wheel's going to have to be reinvented every time. Yeah. Now, uh, finally, on our show here, um, the reason we had you on this show in this particular industry is you've done a lot of work within the industry. You know it backwards and forwards. What do you have to say to our audience if they've been injured? Um, in one of these with a personal watercraft, what do you have to say to them? Well, first of all, it's not your fault uh, that you fall off the back of these things. Don't blame yourself. Uh, the, the manufacturers of the machine that you were on knows that these things happen and have done nothing to prevent it from happening. Yeah. So you do have legal recourse. Um, I would recommend calling an uh, experienced personal injury attorney Myself, I'm very experienced. I don't think anybody knows these types of injuries in the country better than I do. And you're nationwide. Correct. Okay. And so um, I, um, I welcome the opportunity to talk to anyone that has uh, been through this. I, you know, the young ladies are suffering colostomy bags, and, yeah. and, and, and and they're young, and they're young, and and it's 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 ruining uh, their. Uh, their whole life. Their whole life, not yeah. only physically, but their self-image and, and everything yeah. like that. And so uh, I think that um, these ladies, if they are brave enough to step up, then they will help to force the manufacturers to, to do the right thing. Well, that's the reason we're doing this show, to force the manufacturers to make these changes. Doesn't seem like a lot. If they do have injuries, to contact someone like yourself who's very experienced. Correct. And even though you're in Texas and we're here in Texas today, um, you handle cases all around the country. I do, Steve. In fact, I, I always retain a local counsel yeah. in whatever area I am so that uh, someone that's comfortable and familiar with the courthouse in the area, uh, but I oversee the case and, and I'll be the main contact, but I do, I do uh, retain someone in the area right. um, so that they can kind of have a go-to place, the client that lives nearby. Excellent. I want to thank you very much for being with us thank today. Thank you so much for having me, Steve. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. You can get more information about our guests and the issues at InsiderExclusive.com.